Geoeconomics and the New State Capitalism. Abstract in contributing to a critical examination of geoeconomics, this article challenges the prevalent phenomenon of geoeconomic othering ingrained within certain mainstream international relations IR, analyses, focusing on the case of state capitalism in China. We argue that in typical Orientalist fashion, some predominantly Anglo, American analyses tend to disproportionately emphasize China's distinctiveness at the expense of glaring similarities with Western polities, and use this construct to normalize the neoliberal project and the geopolitical behaviors of the global north. The task of a critical geoeconomics is to unpack these geographical imaginaries, to transcend essentializing depictions of the state, and to explore the dialectic entanglements between state and corporate power. As evidenced by a plethora of recent publications, Fora and circulations, the notion of geoeconomics is here to stay. Since the early 21st century, the resurging debate around geoeconomics has been chiefly animated by the international rise of the People's Republic of China, PRC, as an economic powerhouse characterized by state capitalism and an illiberal, authoritarian political system. However, Chinese state capitalism occupies a strange position in some predominantly Anglo American discussions on geoeconomics disparaged as a weak and obsolete market instrument, domestically yet feared as a formidable tool for geoeconomic competition on the international stage, for example Gross, 2014, Kennedy and Blanchett, 2021, World Economic Forum, 2016. In this essay, we contribute to the critical assessment of geoeconomic reasoning, by challenging the othering logic inherent in the characterization of Chinese state capitalism, as simultaneously weak and strong, ineffective yet overwhelming. Beyond this specific case, our critique of geoeconomic othering aims to dismantle the often Western-centric fault lines drawn between geopolitics and geoeconomics, or between good and bad geoeconomics. Geoeconomics emerged as a concept shrouded in ambiguity from its inception, weaving together diverse ideologies and agendas. Domosh, 2013, Malin and Sidaway, 2024. At the core of its present-day mainstream usage lie two overarching interpretations. For some, geoeconomics follows geopolitics, marking a putative transition from a world characterized by the permanent threat of armed conflict to one of market competitiveness, or, borrowing from Spark's critical take, from fear to hope, Spark, 2007. This interpretation harks back to Lutwick's vision in the early 1990s when, from the ruins of the Cold War, a new world order took shape, wherein the territorial security raison d'etre of states was now articulated in the grammar of commerce. Lutwick, 1990. Lutwick's and other examples of geoeconomic analysis in the 1990s fell into what we understand here as the original sin of contemporary geoeconomic thought, the flattering out of the Cold War to an era of crude realpolitik absent of economic contention. See also Crean's, this issue. This notion of geoeconomics was propagated mainly by U.S. think tanks, from liberal to neoconservative fractions, and their European offshoots, so even those who see themselves in opposition to realpolitik and realism deploy the notion, albeit with slightly different interpretations. In reality, of course, the Cold War had been marked by a struggle between economic paradigms, including varieties within capitalism, for example developmental states, welfare states, etc., and within socialism, for example with national characteristics, each manifesting in messy and contradictory real-world iterations. The struggles for a viable economic model that could promote growth, independence and social justice are particularly prescient if we look at the contested political processes in the global south, a place too often beyond the radar of Western international relations, IR. Nevertheless, the new geoeconomics of the 1990s presented the market as a neutral entity and, in doing so, it dangerously aligned itself with the end of history thesis and the neoliberal euphoria of the day. In a second conventional reading, geoeconomics emerges instead in the wake of economics, infusing a statist flavor into an otherwise level field of commercial activity. This interpretation is also underpinned by the original sin of geoeconomics presupposing the free market as the optimum backdrop for interstate rivalry and cooperation. However, in this reading, geoeconomic actors appear as disruptors, as rising powers such as China, India or Brazil endeavor to balance out US-led Western hegemony primarily through economic methods rather than military means, Blackwell and Harris, 2016, Matlin and Wigil, 
2016. Chinese state capitalism, embodied in state-owned enterprises, policy banks and foreign aid, is hence construed as a unique geoeconomic tool affording China the capacity to forge asymmetric relations with other countries, Alami and Dixon, 2020, Scolvin and Wigil, 2018. It is here where we believe that, just like critical geopolitics challenges the politics of geographical representation, Kurs, 2017, a critical geoeconomics must address the epistemic imperialism of neoliberal world, making inherent in conservative iterations of geoeconomics. As such, a critical geoeconomic perspective not only challenges normative constructions of neoliberalism as benign, moral and superior, but also provides a more nuanced lens for examining the multiple relations, actors and scales in shaping geoeconomic discourses, processes, contingencies and outcomes, while some IR analyses see geoeconomics as an enduring feature of international relations, Beeson, 2018, others tend to oversimplify and dehistoricize neoliberalism. This tendency is characteristic of both state-centric IR and neoclassical economics, the latter exhibiting a peculiar blind spot regarding market-making interventions. The combined myopic power of these thoughts and disciplines culminates in the oversight of geoeconomic dynamics, when access to resources and labor is codified within a matrix of supranational institutions and regulations such as the OECD, the IMF or the World Bank, Beeson and Crawford, 2023, Slobodian, 2018. In this vein, mainstream geoeconomics arrives to the curious conclusion that Chinese state capitalism is exceptionally interventionist, even though its overseas development finance issues overt political conditionality in stark contrast to the structural adjustments mandated by the World Bank and IMF. Such analyses overlook the pervasiveness of state interventions, through a wide array of varieties of capitalism, and contrasting institutional arrangements, Hendricks and Sidaway, 2014, including the diverse ways in which states in the global north employ aid to catalyze, or more precisely, subsidize outward private investment, Cheng and Taggart, 2023. A growing body of literature in critical economic and development geography characterizes this shift as the establishment of a retro-liberal regime among Western donors, influenced by the rise of state capital hybridity, Murray and Overton, 2016. It underscores how competitive pressures have led to a convergence towards an active role of the state among Western donors, curiously influenced by Chinese development finance. Finally, the epistemological divide between geopolitics and geoeconomics facilitates also the conclusion that the Chinese state is unconventionally interventionist, while simultaneously absolving the US and European powers despite abundant cases of disastrous military intervention to secure resource supplies and market access. Javeri, 2004. These are textbook examples of geoeconomic analysis, at the service of an othering exercise that delegitimizes the cunning, Scolvin and Wigil, 2018, 75, an aggressive, Liao and Katata, 2021, 1, Chinese approach to international business, all the while employing the Chinese case to, in contrast, whitewash the track record of the global north. Critical geography offers useful perspectives to overcome geoeconomic covering. A crucial way to do so is unpacking the multiple scales of the state or state effects Mitchell, 1991, and studying the state as a social relation rather than an actor, a multiscalar perspective on the state enables us to discern the downscaling and upscaling of political power at levels more than the national state. In this way, it facilitates the examination of parallels between geoeconomic visions encased at different scales, Slobodian, 2018, as for example between China's Belt and Road Initiative and the de risking schemes employed by various international financial institutions, both endeavors aim at expanding capitalist social relations to new market frontiers, Gonzalez Vicente, 2019. In turn, viewing the state as a social relation unveils the geopolitical and geoeconomic agendas enshrined in multiscular state policies, approaching them as outcomes of negotiations of diverse societal forces, venturing beyond the abstractions of IR theory and into the geographies of actually existing capitalism reveals, for instance, how corporate actors influentially shape and, in some instances, spearhead Chinese foreign interactions, Gonzalez Vicente, 2011, Hamirian Jones, 2016, Lim, this issue.
Similarly, a scrutiny of U.S. foreign policy exposes its intricate genesis through complex negotiations at the porous boundary between state and society, as evidenced by the significant role played by corporate lobbying in U.S. domestic and foreign policy. Mitchell, 1991, New House, 2009, by shining the spotlight on the identities, discourses and power relations underlining geoeconomics, we do not advocate an uncritical relativism that treats Chinese reasoning as any more legitimate. Classical Chinese geoeconomics has its own biases, often hinging on the notion of Chinese exceptionalism. Wu, 2018, to provide discursive backing for a sinocentric geoeconomic order, for example Lu and Du, 2013, Mao, 2014, Mao and He, 2023. For instance, we observe the overt celebration of China's rhetorical commitment to non-interference and refusal of conditionality despite its increasing turn to creative involvement in the domestic policy and governance processes of global South countries in order to project China's global interests, Cheng et al., 2023. Ultimately, our critical comparative lenses guide us towards the proposition articulated by Spark, 2007, 2018, this issue, asserting the need to study geopolitics and geoeconomics through a dialectical lens, recognizing them as co-constituted frameworks of political economic engagement. This dialectic perspective steers us clear of analytical inaccuracies stemming from isolating Chinese capitalism as a category of itself that escapes any comparison, while also refraining from squarely placing it under black box typologies susceptible of homogenization or othering. In other words, a dialectical analysis presents Chinese geoeconomics as more than a means to a pre-existing geopolitical end, Li, 2020, but rather as the outcome of the negotiation of interests and agendas coalescing among myriad actors who collectively shape the contours of uncertain geographical futures.